Rightio, in this one, let's have a look at how we can move things up, down, and side to side when we're in maths mode. So, superscripts, really, really straightforward. I'm sure you've seen this before in other applications, probably. You just put one of these caret symbols, one of these up arrows, and that's going to send things upstairs. So, you can see here we've got V squared and we've got U squared. Subscripts, probably a little bit less commonly seen, but it's easy enough. It's just an underscore. All right, so here we've got R underscore naught, and so we get R naught um, down there. We can even do both of these, and I bet you can guess um, how that works. So if we want to do, say, V naught squared, right, we'll put R naught downstairs, and then we'll put the caret to put the, the squared upstairs like that. All right, so that comes in handy from time to time uh, if you want to um, do more complicated formulas. So I guess this one here comes from V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A R minus R naught like that. And because it's the end of a sentence, again, I want to put a full stop there. All right, so um, that, that's all fairly self-explanatory, I think. Now... Sometimes, though, we want to have slightly more complicated um, subscripts and superscripts. So, for example, if they uh, start getting a little bit larger, um, then what we need to do is we need to encapsulate everything in curly brackets. Um, so, for long ones, we do... Um, now, let me have a think. What, what could we do here? We could do something like this. X to the... <clears throat> I'll do it the wrong way first. X to the M plus N. M plus N is equal to X to the M. X to the N. Full stop like that. So you'll see that this isn't going to be quite right because we haven't told LaTeX what exactly we want upstairs. So it's just going to take the first thing after the carrot and put that upstairs. But really, we wanted the plus n up there as well. So as I said before, to get around that little slight issue, we're going to put those guys in curly brackets like that. And that's going to make sure that they both go upstairs. Same sort of thing, by the way, if um, we want to put a couple of things downstairs. So... Um, Maybe we're finding the midpoint of the line segment AB. So we might say, I'll do it the wrong way. So M slash, so underscore AB like that. And LaTeX is going to think, oh, you just want the A down there and not the B. So to get them both going down there, curly brackets is going to be what we want. And I'll also put a full stop because I'm ending a sentence here. Okay, so uh, that's basically how we put things upstairs and put things downstairs in LaTeX. Now, uh, another thing that we want to do sometimes is we want to put some text down there. So back in this formula over here, instead of writing V squared and V naught squared, we might write something like uh, V final. So this is our final velocity. So we'll put that down here. Okay, and then this is our initial velocity. Okay, and then this would be our final position. Like this, and then this would be our initial position like that. Okay, so let's see what happened here. Well, we've got all our subscripts downstairs where we want them. The problem here is, can you see what, what's happened? We've now got italics, which is bringing to mind that these are actually variables to be multiplied. So it looks like we're multiplying F times I times N times A times L, which is of, of course not what we want. So to rectify that problem, what we're going to do is we're going to go forward slash text RM and we're going to capture 
in curly brackets the stuff that we want to be in just ordinary Roman type. Okay, and that's going to fix that up like that. So I'll capture these ones as well. And you're going to be a little bit careful with um, exactly where the curly brackets are going. So a little bit of care is, is needed there. Um, but if you can get in the habit of doing this, it really does make things just pop a little bit more and the finished product's going to look uh, just a little bit nicer in my opinion. Okay, so there's that. Now, one other thing that I'll go through just quickly here is sometimes our subscripts and our superscripts aren't exactly where we would like them to be in terms of their horizontal uh, positioning. Now, what would be an example of that? Um, certainly when we have big brackets, this tends to be a problem. Um, to fix horizontal spacing, we can do... Okay, so what would be an example? What if we do something like uh, one half squared? Okay. A lot of people, by the way, when they do this, when they uh, put the brackets around, they don't make them grow. And that's a perfectly good way of going, by the way. Um, to me, it kind of looks a little bit weird that we've got these tiny little brackets here. So we could get around that by calling this a tiny fraction, a T frat, and then the brackets would seem to be the right size. Okay. But then I think, well, we're displaying our maths. It seems a waste to do that. So another approach is to have a normal size fraction in here, but we'll grow our brackets. So I'm going to go forward slash left and then my bracket and then forward slash right and then my bracket. And that's going to just automatically sort of grow the brackets to the right size like that. But you can see what's happened here. In so doing, it looks like we've got a little bit too much space between the brackets and the two. And a lot of people don't really worry about that. To me, it just looks like something I'd like to fix up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to capture that too in curly brackets. And if we recompile here, nothing will change. Okay. But now it will allow us to put in a little bit more information. So I just want to have a thin space backwards. So I'm going to go forward slash exclamation point. And you'll see what this does. It's just going to shift things over ever so slightly, a little thin space. So we've escaped that um, exclamation point there. We could do three of them if we wanted to, to bring it back three little thin spaces. But then it's, it's overdoing it, in my opinion. So the thing that normally looks right for me, to my eyes, is just a single thin space backwards. And it doesn't come in only handy here. You can do it in other parts of your LaTeX document when you're in maths mode. This is just probably the most common time I use it. And uh, to push things out the other way, for what it's worth, I'll take a copy of this. Um, instead of escaping a thin space backwards, we can escape a thin space forwards. And in that case, we want a comma there. Okay, and that will just shift it out to the right a little bit. Now, obviously, we don't, we don't really want to do that here because it's already too wide. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's already too wide. Um, and if we keep putting in more of these thin spaces over to the right, it's going to get even more so. But this is just to illustrate a point of something that we can do with this. Okay, so thin space, reducing a thin space or increasing a thin space. Those are two ways you can do it. One last thing, one thing that I use all the time. Um, very useful is sometimes when we want to save a bit of space, vertical space in our document, we want to print a couple of things on the same line. So for example, we might have a situation where we've got cosine x equals three fifths. And we want to say on the same line that sine x equals 
four fifths maybe. Four fifths, like that. Now this will look not right when we do it. And that's because they're butting up against each other. So what we could do is we could put in some of these thin spaces. Ding, 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 or whatever. But you can see that there's a lot of work there. You know, it's um, it's not very elegant code, but it does sort of do the job. It, it, it gives us a little bit of space there. But what I actually use in my documents is something called a Q quad. And I reckon a Q quad is the width of two capital M's in this particular font that we're using. So you can imagine two capital M's would fit in between there. That's what a Q quad space is. Or you can just use an ordinary quad, which would be a single capital M wide. But to my eyes, it doesn't look like we've got enough space there. And so it's sort of the happy spot is to have a Q quad. Of course, you could have a couple of Q quads in there if you so desired. But I think just a single Q quad is a good way of spacing things out on that particular line.